Let's now take an example of tidying up by taking a really large data set and performing some tidying up operations using several of the functions that we have learned so far. Okay, so there is a data set called WHO, who, which is from the World Health Organization on t tuberculosis. It's in a package called TidyR. Now TidyR incidentally gets loaded automatically when you load Tidyverse, so you don't really have to load TidyR explicitly. Right, so when you say library tidyverse, it's already there. Okay, so you said library tidyverse, tidyr is loaded, and then if you do who, you get this data set. Okay, so that's what the data set sort of looks like, and you're already familiar with it because you've seen a small subset of this in the tidying example. Right, so you've got the country, you've got the country's ISO 2 character code, the same country's ISO 3 character code, you've got the year. And then you've got columns like new underscore SP underscore M014, the new underscore SP underscore M1524, right? These are all various columns. And uh, if you look at the description of the data set, take help on it, then you'll see what these things mean. And we'll talk about this. And there are many other attributes as well inside. In fact, as I said, this is a real life data set that is pretty large. So there are all these additional attributes which are present. So for example, it says 7,230 more rows. So total of 7,240 rows. Notice there are 60 attributes of which we are seeing only uh, three plus three, six attributes right here. There are 54 more attributes. Okay, that's what it's showing you, 54 more variables. And all the more variables look like this new underscore SP underscore M2534, new underscore SP underscore M3544, etc etc okay so there are all of these things now uh, we have to do a couple of things first of all we need to understand uh, what these columns are all about and then we need to uh, see what happens you know do these stay as rows do these become columns what's going on okay in fact the other way do these all of these new SPs do they say as columns or do they become rows or do we need to split a lot of things that we need to examine some of the issues that you will find in this data set are things like missing values, redundancies, odd codes, etc, etc. So let's take a look at this. Okay, So there is clearly redundancy in the sense that the country is being represented in three different ways. Right? You've got the country name, then you've got the two character code and the three character code. So clearly for analysis purposes, it's enough if we retain just one of these three columns. Okay, So that is redundancy. Uh, the second of course is lots of missing values. Right, so we need to do something about the missing values, clean them up, uh, because otherwise they'll start playing some role in our analysis. And finally, these columns here, you know, it says new underscore SP underscore M014, M1524, etc. Now, a priori, they look like they are actually uh, values, data values, rather than actually column headings. Right? It looks like these things, you know, the 014 and 1524, etc. have some meaning. Uh, other than being just column names. They look like data values. Okay, So then uh, we need to think about seeing, okay, uh, these are not just attributes, but they're actually data values. So maybe what we need to do is to uh, make them into rows, perhaps. Okay, So we need to look at that aspect also. So first, what we are going to do is we are doing, uh, we are creating these, the new SP, etc. Okay, gathering them up into one column, right? Because we are speculating that these things are all data values and not columns, right? So we are gathering them up. And we are saying, notice what we are doing. You've got new SP M14 colon new rel underscore uh, F65, right? So what's going on there is we are taking all of these columns, right? So there are many columns and uh, the colon uh, functionality that you have to say starting from here to there and deals do something with all of them that is coming in handy right here okay so we are able to say here take all the columns starting from new underscore SP underscore m14 to new rel underscore f65 okay and put them into a new column called key for lack of a better term and the value we're going to call S cases, right? Because the, the actual columns have values. And here we are taking care of the NAs by saying na.rm equals true. If a value is missing, forget about it. Don't even include it. 
Okay, so there are two problems that we are taking care of with this operation. One is we suspected that the columns are not really columns and they are actually data values. So we brought them in through gather and we also saw that there were a lot of NAs. So we are getting rid of them by doing NA dot RM equals true. Okay, so now if you look at who won, you you will see the data. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to check and you know see what the how many different values of key there are okay so you've got key and each of them occurs you know roughly equal number of times okay that is a key column which we gathered into into this okay so that actually justifies our understanding that these are perhaps uh, you know uh, data values rather than column headings Okay, so now let's understand more what these things mean. Okay, so let's say if you take this thing like new underscore EP underscore F1524, that's one of the values for that column key. Okay, so the, the value new, it could be new or it could be old. Okay, this is the description of how that code is actually represented. So here we are talking about how many occurrences of a particular kind of tuberculosis were found in that country during a particular year. Okay, New means that during a particular year this case was new. Old means during that particular year this case was not old. It was already identified in the earlier year and it's ca carrying over. Okay, And uh, here you've got uh, several possibilities EP uh, etc or it could be rel, it could be sn, it could be sp, those are the possible values for this part of that code and that these are what those things mean. So rel means relapse, ep means extra pulmonary tuberculosis, sn is smear negative and sp is smear positive. Those are the results of certain tests that they performed to identify what kind of uh, a disease the person has. right? And this f could be f or m represents the gender and the final things represent the age groups. The possible age groups are 0 to 14, uh, 15 to 24, etc., etc. Okay, there are many other possibilities, right? So the last part, which could be, uh, you know, uh, four characters or three characters, represents the age group within which you found these numbers, right? So for example, if you had new EP 1524 to be uh, 100 in a particular row, what that means is there were 100 such cases for females for that particular age group. Okay, so that's the meaning of this. So clearly, given that this is what is going on with this particular uh, with this particular column, which we have now converted into rows, it might be a good idea for us to split it into uh, you know separate it into three different or one, two, three, four different columns. Right? Because you may say, well, whether it's new or old, I want to put that into one column. Whether it's EP or REL or SN or SP, I want to put that into one column. The gender, F and M, we want to put it in its own column. And finally, the age group, we want to put it in its own column. Now, why do we want to put all of these into their own columns? Why not simply leave them as they are? Okay. The reason we would want to put them into their own columns is because we might want to perform certain analyses. Right, so we might want to say, okay, of the total number, give me a breakup of the different types of tuberculosis that you're seeing in the data, right? Or let's do some analysis by gender. Let's do some analysis by age group, right? So if you want to do all of these sorts of analysis, it's a good idea for us to put them into separate uh, columns so that we can group by those columns. Or if you're doing a ggplot, you can do facets by those columns uh, uh, by those uh, columns, etc. Okay, if they're all smushed into one single column, you won't be able to perform these analyses. You can, but it's just a lot of extra work. So uh, again, this follows the principle of saying, look, let every cell contain uh, an atomic value, a value that cannot be further subdivided. Here, clearly, this is not an atomic value. Lots of different things are combined into uh, into one single data value. Okay, so that's what uh, we really want to do. We want to split them up into their own category. So how do you do that? So we are saying, uh, first of all, uh, uh, we find there is a column called new rel. In fact, the very last column, right? 
Uh, so typically they are following a convention of having a new underscore rel or new underscore whatever, right? So they're following they're following that. But however, for whatever reason, there are some columns in which there is no underscore between new and rel. Okay. So in order to make things consistent, first thing we are going to do is to change the key column so that there is always an underscore between new and whatever follows it, right? Especially new rel. So we are using this function called str underscore replace, which is in a package called string r. Okay. And str underscore replace. And string r, by the way, gets uh, loaded when you do uh, tidyverse. Okay. Uh, str underscore replace key comma new rel comma new underscore rel. That is, we are saying replace the uh, column, uh, the value new rel with the value new underscore rel. Okay, so now when you look at it, you will see that the values, the, that those values now have underscores in the proper place. Now we can start separating the values, right? Remember we said we want to separate the new, we want to separate the, the type of tuberculosis, the gender, etc. So as a first step, we are separating new type and sex age. We are doing that because you've got already, you've got underscores separating them. So if you do a first separation, these three things will come out and then later on we'll separate sex age into uh, sex and age separately, right? So here we are saying sep equals underscore, we need to have said that because that's an alphanumeric character, it would have done the job anyway, okay? So that's that part. So the next thing we are going to do is we just want to see, uh, you know, how many different values of uh, this new are there, right? So is it that there are some new cases or do you also have some old cases? Okay, so if you do the count of new, you, it turns out that count of new is basically the total count of the number of rows and therefore we realize that all the values are new, right? So therefore, uh, there is no old at all, which means we don't have to worry about this column because you've got a column in which all the values are exactly the same. Then we can remove that column, okay? So we are saying, okay, let's leave out the column new and let's leave out the columns ISO 2 and ISO 3 because they are just two other ways of naming a country. Let's just keep the country name and let's leave out this redundant data. Okay. So in this step, what we are doing is getting rid of some of the redundant data. Okay. So that's what we did. Drop some redundant columns. Okay. So now we take, uh, we created who 4 without the redundancies. Now we take who 4 and split up the sex and age from the sex age, right? Remember earlier we created this sex age, which would be F1524. We want to put F in its own column and 1524 into another column. So we are saying separate this column sex age into two columns called sex and age and separate at the first position, right? Because you'd start either with F or with M. So separate at the first position, right? So now if you do this, you'll see uh, everything. Okay, so if you want to put all this together, you can just combine them all into one single uh, workflow. This is just using pipe instead of creating all of those who one and who two and who three, who four, who five. I'm just putting all of them into a single workflow with pipes. Okay, so that's that's the complete thing. At the end of this, who, uh, whatever is the result of this will be our tidied uh, table you might want to assign that to some variable, which we will then use in additional process. We might then use in additional processing.